Well, have you ever heard the saying when life gives you lemons? We've got a backed up sewer line here, and I was planning on the next time this happened uh, to make a video and show you how I take care of it. Now, having four kids and two of them being at the age where sometimes they'll flush things that shouldn't be flushed, or they'll flush too much of something they should be, at one time you get backups. So what I've done is I have invested in a two inch bladder. I hook up to a garden hose and I feed it down the line and it pushes any blockage on out down to the city main. So what I'm going to do is I've ran previously PVC pipe to a spigot so that I can control the water from the basement instead of having to constantly run outside and hook up the water line and turn it off and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the water now and we're going to see what we got going on. Got gloves on the boots and of course everything has to be sanitized when I'm done. And I use bleach for that. So let's hook up this hose. And this is the first time that I've actually had to use this water line bib since installing it. So we'll see how it goes. I've had to unclog this uh, several times since we've lived here, but this will be the first time that I'll do it with the convenience of my water supply being so close to me. There's a floor drain in the basement right here, and what happens is the blockage happens, and then it uh, backs up up that floor drain. So I've got the, you see me, I'll pull this back out. You see me, I screwed, the, I screwed it on to the hose. You wanna make sure you get it screwed all the way on so it doesn't fall out. This is a two inch and four inch pipe. And you're gonna just push it on through and you wanna push it as far as you can until you hit resistance. And there, I got resistance right there. Now at this point, you want to turn your water on. Okay, got my water on. I'm going to turn my shut off. Everything's good, no leaks. And you're going to want that to run. What's happening is that bladder is swelling up. Once it swells up to the inside diameter of that pipe, it starts shooting a pressurized stream out the end. Well, the, the pressurized water only has one place to go, and that is towards the city main. As the bladder swells, it's going to prevent any of the water backing up. I find it's good to let that run for a good few minutes because you're wanting pressure to build up, and that's going to push whatever blockage is on down into the city. It takes about 10 seconds or maybe even less than that, maybe 5 to 10 seconds for that bladder to swell to the size of the pipe. And then after that, the rest of the time, it's just going to be pressurizing what's on down the line. So we just kind of let it do its thing, sit here patiently. We'll know that it's worked when we turn the water off and then the floor drain starts uh, self, self draining just from the water just going right out that floor drain. Um, before, this, I'd say that uh, this is a huge cost savings. The bladder itself is about $20. If you were to call a sewer man and have him rotor root this line, it would be a minimum of $125 to $150 in this area. Um, 
This is definitely a, a skill that you, as a homeowner, you want to learn on your own because it's really a simple task and it's going to save a lot of money. Over the last, oh, 18 years, I've had to do this about seven times, um, all at different houses and just different situations. When we used to have rental property, I had to use this a couple times. So I'd say I've, I've done it maybe seven to eight times at $150 a pop. That's a savings of $1,200. It just takes a little bit of your time. It's not that big a deal. Like I said, it's $20 plus the cost of the water, which is, you know, not very much. We'll continue to let it run for a few more seconds and we'll see what's going on. It's not a very exciting thing, but it is a good skill to know. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and see, if, see how it's looking. So now, I've turned off the water. I have to let the bladder deflate. And now, I'm going to push it a little further so that initial blockage that I hit is cleared. So I want to just keep on pushing it. Okay? Until you come across another blockage. Which, yeah, there I got one. So I just was able to gain another. Oh, 10 feet or so. We're going to let this run. Same thing. We're just wanting to force whatever's blocking that pipe on out into the main. I've got 4 inch sewer line here. Actually, it might be 5 inch. It's 4 or 5 inch sewer line that's running out into the main. And of course, the city main is going to be quite a bit bigger pipe. I'm not even sure what dimension of pipe that they would have running, but since everyone down the street is going to be tying into that same main, I would assume it would have to be quite a bit bigger. Okay, making sure I got tension. That bladder swelled up quite a bit. Since I was able to push it down further, I'm going to go ahead and turn this water off again and then see if I can get on down the line any more than I am already. Water's off. Give it a second for that bladder to leave the pressure, to alleviate the pressure so that I can push it down further. Oh yeah. It's going down further. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there I am. Now I'm going to hold with this hand, kind of hold that pipe there, turn the water on. Okay. I just wanted to hold that uh, garden hose so that as the bladder is building pressure, the force of the water coming out of the bladder wasn't backing up the uh, pipe any. And as you can see, it's still right where it was. So that's really good. This water is, is, of course, yucky. I mean, it's it's septic, you know, it's sewer water. When we're all done and we get this cleared up, we will be uh, pushing, we'll be shooting bleach all around this area. I've got a stick over here. It's a real old fishing rod, rusted, no good. I use it to find that hole, the floor drain hole. You want to make sure that there's nothing just really clogged right there. Um, because if there is, you might not even be able to tell the water is leaving after you have it taken care of. Just kind of clear that out. A little bit of waste paper there. Keep the handle from getting put in the water because the handle is still relatively clean. Okay. 
turn that water off. See what we got going on. Still, still right there. Okay. Turn the water back on. Make sure the bladder is pressurizing. Let me give it a second. I'm going to try to tug on it. The pipe shouldn't, or the garden hose shouldn't be able to pull out of this pipe at all. So something. I think there might be a kink in the hose. Turn off the water. And back this, back this out. We may have it fixed. I hear water. I do hear water trying to flow. Oh yeah, we got it. We have the blockage cleared. So now that the blockage is cleared, all the water that had been backed up here is leaving out this floor drain. Go ahead and pull this bladder out. Sometimes it takes some finagling. Alright, we got the bladder. It's not the most glamorous job in the world, but it's an important job nonetheless. So you can see Put the cap back on. Move this out of the way. Move this garden hose out of the way a little bit. Step over here and turn the water on. And we're just going to rinse just with water for now. Going to rinse some of this extra. Fortunately, the water only backed up a few feet radius. Oh, maybe six foot or so. When you have a floor drain like this, it's important to check on it daily. This is our basement. Come down here every day. And it's important that you check on that as a homeowner because you never know. If I didn't come down here daily, you know, this could really get out of hand. But, knowing that it's just part of home ownership, it's just one of those things you have to do from time to time. Let's see. It's like as all that water was going down, it might have tried to back up a little bit. Just going to force a little bit of water down there. I don't think I need the bladder this time. There we go. I'm just going to go in here, run the hose without the bladder. I've already cleared the main. I've already cleared the main blockage. As all that paper was going down, it seems that it's locked itself up again.
put the bladder on, run it back down, go until you hit resistance, just like before. Put that water to it. Let it work. All right, left off, and I just put this back down there, ran it for a little bit, got the clog undone. All the water has uh, has went down the pipe. Now I just need to get this bladder out. Sometimes it tries to get hung up in that bin. There we go. Then we're going to get back to just rinsing the rest of this stuff that's on top of the concrete on down. So that's what we're going to do. Turn the water on and get the rinsing. There we go. Yeah, it's going good now. The key is to have plenty of water going down and try to just get a little bit of this debris to go down that pipe at a time because this pipe here is only like a two inch pipe and it goes down and down further down the line it ties into that four inch so you don't want to you don't want to overwhelm this smaller pipe I'm going to turn this off real quick put my nozzle on there that jet setting will get us a little bit better there we go now we're doing something there we go get over here real quick We just want to get all this rinsed off, wash down this pipe, and then once we've done that, I have a one and a half gallon sprayer there with bleach water in it, and we are going to spray, well it's probably 75% bleach at least, it's not really watered down very much. Uh, we want to get everything sanitized. So we'll just keep spraying this stuff. There's some paint chips and things coming off the painting floor. That's okay, we'll just keep them down there too. Water didn't really get up this high, so I'm just kind of Closing it down. Everything's everything's draining nicely. I'd say we've got about 20, 25 minutes in this project so far. I had to guess. I haven't been keeping track on my of how long it's taken so far, but you can basically figure on if it's your first time, it's of course going to take you a little longer. But if you've done it a few times, you're comfortable with what to do. You know, something like this takes you about probably half an hour, give or take five or ten minutes. But 
you know, you're saving hundred and fifty dollars. So to me it's a no brainer. Easy decision. Looking pretty good. There's a rock right there. I'm just going to move that rock over here. Don't really want a rock going down there. It's not going to break down. Put that over here. Spray it off. Looking pretty good. Turn this water off real quick. Okay. Mainly off. Turn it back on, just kind of give it a good rinse. Without all the pressure. Good rinsing. So earlier when I mentioned the size of the bladder, it sits about two inches. That does not mean it's made for a two inch pipe. I was just saying it's about two inches across right now. About two inches across. It is designed for a four to five inch pipe. It may even say on the package four to six inch pipe. I've had this bladder for, well, like 10 years. You know, they last a long time. Um, they have smaller ones depending on what size your pipe is, but I can't. one thing I can't stress enough is it's extremely important that you do not turn the water on until the entire bladder is inside the pipe. If you, I've turned the water on before just to see what would happen when it was not in the pipe, and it just swells up so fast I'm pretty sure that if you did it outside of pipe, that it would try to blow up on you. And uh, that would not be good. So don't try that. I'm just disconnecting this hose now. Because uh, we're done with that right now. disconnected, water's turned off. I have a shutoff valve here. Turning off the shutoff valve. That's all done. Now I've got my bleach. And I will be doing, I'm only going to be uh, recording the one uh, bleaching or whatever sanitizing, whatever you want to call it, but uh, I'll do this several times. Just spray everything down. I have it on kind of a mist. Yeah, a good, good heavy mist. And I just want to spray everything down really good that was contaminated. Get a real good spray. And that bleach will kill off anything, any pathogens or whatever, any bacteria that uh, may be present. And since there's water here, for me just rinsing this off, I would assume that this bleach mixture would be a little more diluted. You know, I can smell the bleach. It smells really strong of bleach right now. But uh, that's why I'm going to spray it a couple times over the next day. I'll come out here again tomorrow, spray it down. Because I want to make sure this is all really good and sanitized. Spray a little farther than even the water went just to make sure. I'd rather over sanitize than under, you know. Spray this fishing rod thing that I used as a poker. 
spray it real good. But yeah, so everything, I'm spraying the hose down, uh, everything. That's all there is to it, really. So we identified where our clean out was right here. That's handy. So we didn't have to dig for any clean out. I already knew where the floor drain was. It's good to identify where all this stuff is before you have an issue. You don't want to be feeling around trying to find your clean out, trying to find your drain in the middle of all that. So as a homeowner, it's good to identify these things before you have an issue. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you would, if you found it helpful at all, appreciate if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. I do mainly gardening and fishing content, but as projects like this come around the house, I'll be videoing them to help other people who, uh, who may need to find these resources down the line. Really happy to help people. So uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, like the video, and uh, if you feel so co um, compelled, uh, if you're watching any of my videos and you appreciate them, share them on social media so that other people can find them and appreciate the content as well. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.